Welcome to Engineering is in Our DNA, a podcast series where we talk about the next in engineering that is powering the future for businesses across the world. The COVID-19 pandemic caused the healthcare industry to transform overnight, accelerating the shift to digital technologies and changing the payer ecosystem. In this episode, Sally Els, president of the Emphasis Healthcare Platform Mark Unit, and Bala Subramaniam Vidagiri, Senior Vice President and General Manager of Emphasis Healthcare and Life Sciences, look at this shift in the healthcare sector and the opportunities ahead. They will also discuss how Emphasis is prepared to support the industry to innovate and leverage these opportunities to continue delivering personalized experiences. Hello, Bala. Nice to spend a little bit of time uh, with you today talking about what we're seeing in the healthcare market. Um, I'm curious as to what kind of trends you might be seeing. A couple of things that are really resonating with me are, you know, after years and years of not really thinking about the experience as part of the healthcare market, I think finally um, we've really we've really connected, and that experience must be a big part of all of all of our lives as it relates to healthcare. Um, and and. Even more importantly, we seem to have moved beyond the member experience and we're embracing all kinds of experiences, including the providers, the full care, so- care so- circles, and even family members. Um, a second thing that I think is really interesting in, in the uh, healthcare economy is as we come out of this pandemic, where there's been so much power around the employees and resourcing, I think it's interesting the shift to, from a healthcare perspective, how much power the employers can have in really coming in and impacting the lives and the healthiness of their employees. And I think it's a powerful time um, to really think about experience-led design and cloud computing and how that can sort of facilitate this power and engagement for between the employer and the employee as we come out of, of the pandemic. Just curious as to what, what key um, trends you're seeing and really paying attention to in the market. Uh, thank you, Sari. Very, very interesting and relevant um, uh, question you asked and also you, you answered part of it in my opinion. See, I see that the key trends that generally the healthcare life sciences uh, customers, especially in the payer and provider market, uh, do is number one. Today, there are more adaption of uh, machine learning and cognitive uh, technologies. Uh, there are more of uh, the RPAs, enterprise health record modernization, enhancing and integration with uh, the Epic Cerner, etc. Then you spoke about the cloud. The cloud is becoming very, very, very critical uh, growth lever for all of. Uh, healthcare customers. I read about a Vantage market research which stated that um, the whole computing market globally for healthcare in the cloud space would reach 70 billion by 2028. And BCC report further indicates that it would be at $35 billion by end of this year. That's a phenomenal growth that you can expect to see. Obviously, more and more healthcare customers are getting into the hybrid cloud uh, adaption for reducing cost and improving scalability, storage and flexibility. One important uh, and not to miss trend that, that I'm seeing today is the what we call multi-experience uh, platform, uh, which, is, which is actually rendered with the help of distributed cloud. Now this frictionless customer experience that it creates across your website, applications, voice, touch, text, etc., can actually grow to 25% of all the mobile applications, progressive web apps, and conversational applications at large enterprise will all be having this much as predicted by Gartner, right? So Gartner also says this, BCC indicates certain things, Vantage Market Research says this, and from our our own uh, observation of discussing with various uh, clients and prospects, we see these are the... uh, generic and very clear specific trend that are happening in the market. Having spoken about the frictionless customer experience, uh, Sally, my view is that experience is key for patient outcomes and data is the fuel for engine. So in your opinion, how can the payer and provider embrace this experience-led design with cloud computing? What, what, what do you think 
can be right, done right, right. Well, well, so Bala, again, you sort of touched on it, right? From more from a technology um, basis and a cloud, multifaceted cloud concept. Because I think sometimes we think about cloud as the be all and end all. And what you're pointing out is it's not that, it's a facilitator, it's a catalyst, right? So what you have to have on the front end then is this design element, um, really thinking about what is the experience that you're trying to drive? Is it to, to reduce um, some of the impacts of comorbidities? 30% of our, of our population in the US are suffering from co comorbidities. How can you drive um, that experience into changing their lives. And in order to do that, you have to think about it from a design perspective on the front end. Then you have half, you have to have access to the data. And then you, in, and the best way to have access to that data in a safe, um, very accessible um, environment is probably cloud, right? And then as you say, all those different access points, I think that's what's changing. And it's that bringing together of the experience from a design-led experience perspective, as well as um, the enabling capabilities of technologies, um, including the, the hybrid cloud, into impacting the outcome with the patient. That's the only thing that really matters. So, so if the two of us are sort of seeing this breakdown in the siloed approach, right? The payers and providers um, hardly used to even acknowledge each other, let alone um, interoperate with each other. Bala, what do you think um, has led to this kind of synchronization of the payers and the providers across that, that emerging healthier ecosystem of healthcare? Great question. So first, let me dwell into the business context, Sally, right? Uh, before I talk about the, the technology aspect. The business context is, you mentioned at the beginning, the recent pandemic has actually changed the, the market needs dramatically and intensify the customer expectation to have virtual care, telehealth services provided by providers, and that needs to be covered by the payers. So which means both payers and providers need are forced to evolve, right? That's the first uh, uh, context. The second context, which dates back, is the CMS, the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services. It mandated the three things, the Medicare advantage that we know, the Medicare chat services program is the second one, and the bundled payment for care improvement initiative. These three cannot be done in isolation because the providers need to provide the coverage benefits to align the policies and bring in the payment reform. And for that, you need to really do the synchronization or interoperability between the payer and provider. And the third uh, development that has happened is the concept of integrated delivery network, IDN, or colloquially we call, or the synonymously we call it as pay providers. Pay providers like Kaiser Permanente, Geisinger Health Systems, these are all uh, examples that I think of, where they have a, a concerted goal to reduce the financial risk, increase profitability for both organizations, and provide higher quality medical care to the patients. And in this context, the payers also wanted to see more ability to monitor drug adherence and treatment regimes. So these are all the three broader, uh, I would say, business context or the, the ecosystem context that forced to break the silo approach. And from emphasis one uh, side, you may know, we are building this healthcare platform, which actually creates the confluence of capability, the software tools and healthcare systems that with transformation services to enable both payer and provider who can leverage the same fire standards. Now, how does that translate from the technology side? Well, fire standards uh, use the APIs and it is on the HL7 format. And the resultant data lake that comes from them by the exchanging of data has high impact on the patient experience, payer benefit and visibility into the care that we spoke about. The third is the analytics of the structured and unstructured data, which creates a big data, creates better, uh, you know, the, the advantage with regard to the leading a better outcome, identifying and predicting and minimizing fraud, and also to come up with the real time claim authorization. So these are all the reasons why the siloed approach cannot remain. It has to be broken down and it is actually evolving on its own, in my opinion.
Now changing the topic, Sally, there is another new emerging ecosystem. While we spoke about the, the pay wider or the integrated delivery network, uh, there is also you know, the, the use, the experience led design to fundamentally disrupt market. Uh, and one of our recent clients, SBR comes to my mind. Uh, could you talk about that and talk about how that benefits? Right. So, so Bala, what I hear you, what I hear you talking about is everything from breaking down the business, the sharing of risk across the payer and the provider, all the way through to how you touch the member in terms of outcomes and using data and all these various technologies that you spoke about in order to do that. Um, this particular customer that we've recently been been working with has really stepped back even farther. And, and said, how do you think about um, risk as it comes into the payer market? How do you even think about experience around um, the actuarial side of the healthcare ecosystem and taking it all the way from the experience of, of the actuarials through to the brokers? Um, and then of course, to reach out and touch members and specifically members who may be moving from one geographical area to another. And in order to do that, um, I'm going to come back to data. So data is in in not in short supply in our healthcare world, right? There is plenty of data. What sometimes we lose is the opp opportunity to have information. What is that 10% from the clinical systems to the payer systems to the even the, the, the diagnostics, the pharmacies are wearables, and how are you able to amalgamate that data and bring that into an experience design concept. And that's what I really see this customer doing. And again, using those technologies and specifically cloud computing and the bringing together and using it, I, I think of it as a catalyst, right? Um, that cloud concept is really enabling this particular customer to think about it all the way from the, as I said, the actuarials, all the way through to the member experience. Very interesting um, concept, and I think actually leading the industry and will be very disruptive and very successful um, as we move forward with them. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to throw it back to you, Bala. Um, Emphasis talks about engineering being in our DNA, and you and I have kind of back and forth. We've talked about business concepts and technology concepts and how the two must be married together. How do you see, see us kind of applying that engineering in our DNA, applying those engineering principles to really help clients specifically in the healthcare space and, and maybe even specifically in the cloud computing space? Could you comment on that? Yeah, absolutely. So it's, it's an interesting question and uh, I would say very, very relevant to explain. So firstly, engineering or ingenium in Latin actually means cleverness. And when we say engineer, it means to contrive or device something, right? Device a new thing. So thus the engineering theme is all about using the right technology principles, whether it is application, software, infrastructure, to design and build business solutions that are relevant and applicable to the customer's business needs. So when our teams demonstrate such trait with muscle memory of how they had already executed those applications of solutions to solve customer demands, irrespective of industry, we draw that from our engineering DNA, right? That's a definition that I draw in my mind as to when we say, hey, engineering is in our DNA, this is how we, we experience, we execute. Now, answering your second part of where we do in the healthcare space using cloud computing, I have few ideas or few uh, key themes that I want to talk about. One is the usage of blockchain in the health cloud. Now, this is supposed to be uh, a very, very highly anticipated and growth enabler for the global healthcare cloud marketing uh, team. And emphasis has been an early adopter. We built the blockchain technology. We built industry specific solutions around digital assets and more recently Web 3.0. Alta as a platform that we built uh, was for the supply chain using some of the principles there. And the recent crossed our uh, partnership will bring in that innovative blockchain solutions to healthcare and life sciences industry. And where do I see them applicable? Are around fraud prevention using some uh, the smart contracts. EHRs can also be on smart contract so that you are able to integrate the variety of wellness related behaviors. Right? So I see blockchain, uh, you know, the, the way we executed the some of the, the engineering uh, solutions that we built 
applicable to the healthcare. The second one is Internet of Things or Internet of Medical Things, where again we have a medallion tribe which looks at that particular theme and we specifically provide that um, uh, the DICOM standard related solutions. However, there is also one more notch above, which is to actually address the cyber security concerns post migrating to cloud. So your medical device integration, if it relies heavily on the IOMT and IoT areas, you also need to take care of cyber security. That's where the cyber security tribe, along with the medallion tribe, which is the, the group of horizontals, uh, horizontal skilled people who are expert in that area can come and help any customer uh, address that particular problem. The third is the cognitive. We are a cloud cognitive company. We have built the cognitive chatbots. It's it's live in many customer uh, shops today, and it enhances uh, the experience that you spoke about earlier. So the, the natural language processing NLP talents that we build are very, very, very specific and sensitive when we apply to member and patient experience uh, to, to look at your operational e efficiency in areas like uh, revenue cycle management, claims adjudication, etc. And lastly, uh, I should I cannot end without talking about the AAML. So we generated the a three year demand forecast for almost 27,000 SQOs using time series and built machine learning models on AWS cloud. Now, this is very unique because we outperform the benchmark of ERPs like SAP to forecast specific uh, client needs on where they could improve their product planning and to reduce their inventory management cost. So very clearly, the text extraction analytics coupled with the NLP engine that we build around the ML, the machine learning models, are some of the things that we already executed for some of the customers uh, on the cloud. So the theme that we just spoke about summarizes that as emphasis, we breathe and live the engineering in our DNA principle, and uh, hopefully uh, there will be more that we'll start bringing out as part of our solution. Right? With that, uh, Sally, uh, I think it's uh, top of the hour, and uh, it's it's very uh, nice and uh, as usual, very very informative to exchange thoughts with you. Uh, and I uh, I would uh, certainly like to do more sessions like this with you so that uh, our exchange of ideas can be more. That's right, Paula. Um, I think two things, you know, first of all, emphasis with all of the various capabilities and characteristics that you describe is poised to really assist the healthcare industry move forward uh, with with great leaps, right? Um, and what you're really describing is the concept of a platform where we're bringing these things together um, and making them accessible to the to the overall ecosystem. So thanks for your time. Always learn so much from you. Great to talk to you. Let's do it again. Um, but for now, I'm going to change our mantra from engineering is in our DNA to cleverness is in our DNA. So thanks for that. <laughs> <Yeah>, thank <laughs> Bye so for much. now.